For most of the world, going to bed means jumping into bed and turning out the light. For people who use ventilators, a few more steps need to be taken to ensure you and your ventilator are ready for a good night's sleep. Join me this week as I discuss a few tips when preparing for bed on a ventilator. When getting ready for bed, it is a good idea to clear out your airways. If you have an inner cannula, you may want to take it out and exchange it for a clean one. You may also want to suction your lungs. For more information on inner cannulas and suctioning, please watch my video called Have a Trach Invent? Info you need to know. One method I like to use to clear out my airways is by using a nebulizer. I simply run about five milliliters of normal saline through my nebulizer. When using your nebulizer, it is best to lean forward. Leaning forward will help bring up the mucus from your airways and into your tracheostomy tube. Now, if you do not have a cough reflex, once the mucus has accumulated in your tracheostomy tube, you're going to want to suction. I am very blessed that I still have a cough reflex. For me, most of the time, all the mucus is hanging right here on the end of my tracheostomy tube. I simply have to disconnect my ventilator and cough into a napkin and the mucus which has accumulated in my tracheostomy tube is easily gotten rid of. Before going to bed, completely fill up the water chamber apparatus on your heater. This water chamber is the water chamber my medical equipment company uses. For me, the water chamber lasts about six hours before it runs dry. The recommendation is to fill the water chamber to the line on the container. This is ideal, but for me this means I'll be woken up after six hours from dry air rushing into my lungs. You can do a few things to mitigate this. First, you can overfill your water chamber. This is not ideal, but I have been able to fill up my water chamber to the top of the lettering on my water chamber. This allows the water chamber to run for about seven hours before it runs dry. Please do not fill your water chamber completely full. This will cause the water to be forced from your water chamber and into your tubing. You will not be able to breathe. If you fill your water chamber too full, simply disconnect the water chamber from your tubing and dump out the excess water. Another option is to get a water chamber with an IV spike. The IV line from the water chamber will be connected to a one liter bottle of sterile water. If I fill up the one liter bottle, it will last about 20 to 22 hours. For what it is worth, I'm able to get these water chambers online and occasionally from my durable medical equipment company. However, these bottles of sterile water are very hard to get. I often get them whenever I'm in the hospital. Since I only have a few of these bottles, I wash them out frequently and then I refill them with distilled water. I will continue to reuse the bottles until this seal on the end of the bottle cap breaks. Once this breaks, I then will use a different bottle and seal. One of the most important things to check before going to bed is your ventilator's electrical cord. Make sure your ventilator is plugged into the electrical outlet. Check the front of your ventilator to see if your ventilator is being charged. If this light is illuminated, it means the ventilator is plugged into an electrical outlet. If this light is not on, it means the ventilator is being run on battery. Another thing to check is to make sure this cord is securely and snugly attached. Although this light might be on, this cord might be very, very loose and easily disconnect. Make sure this is completely and securely plugged in and that it does not disconnect very easily. One of the most bothersome complications during the night is having the tubing on your ventilator disconnect. Before going to sleep, check all your tubing connections. Start at the air filter pressing together all the tubing connections and work your way to your tracheostomy tube. One of the most important areas to examine is where the tubing connects to the heater humidifier. Make sure the tubing is securely attached to the water chamber. 
Also make sure if you have any wires from your heater, which are attached to your tubing, that they are connected properly. Another tubing connection which should be checked is where your tubing connects to your tracheostomy tube. Make sure the tubing is securely and tightly attached. If the tubing is loose, it may disconnect during the night. Some people enjoy a more secure attachment and use a product called an anti-disconnect. This strap is placed on the ventilator tubing. The ventilator tubing is then attached to the tracheostomy tube. The strap then attaches to the tracheostomy tube holder via Velcro. This anchors the ventilator tubing to the tracheostomy tube and prevents the two from disconnecting. Before going to sleep, if you have a cuff on your tracheostomy tube, check to make sure it is fully inflated. If it is not fully inflated, the cuff may vibrate in your airways and cause a snoring sound. Also, air may leak up through your nose and mouth and not give you the full ventilatory support you need for a good night's sleep. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Sweet dreams.